Hi hey everyone, Sir Thermo here again. And today I chose Kiss Kaisa, I chose Kiss Evelyn, so it's Gwen's turn. Now, in my opinion, the most success I have had with Gwen is actually with the control archetype playing Nazis. And why are we playing Nazis? Because of a little unit here called Taibo. Remember, Taibo, when it's summoned, gives all other everywhere plus one and makes so that all skills deal an extra damage. You know what's a skill? Gwen. Once is actually a skill. So once you have your Tybok in the field, it means that your Sniff Sniff is actually going to do three, drain three from the enemy Nexus. And it also means that her level up ability is draining two for every two powers that you have. So now you see where the synergy comes in. All of a sudden, Gwen's skill just becomes a game finisher in this type of deck. The rest of the deck is very straightforward, very similar to the Annie, Elise, uh, Control decks that you have seen before, except that because we're playing Gwen, we completely go away from the for, uh, from the catalog package. So we cut the Go Hearts, we cut the catalogs, and instead we kind of play more of the Gwen package. So we're playing two Eternal Dances, which by the way, by the way, Eternal Dance is kind of busted. It can synergize with Tybo, can summon Tybo back if you have enough Hollow units on the field. She can summon Katarina back. That's why we played one Katarina in this deck, creating an infinite loop of rallies, by the way. Or she can always summon Gwen back, which is going to do a lot of damage, right? So we play Eternal Dancers, we play Gwen, we play three stack of the bands because this is going to advance our conservatory and give us blockers as well as uh, obviously more hollow units on the graveyard. Uh, two conductors, really great, good, really great stats, and he also gives us another ghostly band. And that's it. That's it for the game package. Now, win package. Now, we don't have a lot of hollow units, to be fair. But really, you don't win because of the hollow. All you need is to have just a few hollow units in the graveyard for Gwen to start doing so much damage. It's combined with, like, Tybo that it just finishes the game that way. The rest of the deck is very straightforward, right? We play two Annie. We're not playing triple Annie because we are playing one Katarina. Because, again, we talked about the synergy with Katarina as well with the Eternal Dancers, which you'll see in the games coming up soon, how he actually comes in really clutch. Uh, the rest of the deck, the other units that we have is two House Spiders and Triple Sentry. And this really all the units that we have. Our Champions, Sentry, Conductor, and House Spider, as well as our big uh, our big uh, high-cost units. And then we just play a lot of control spells. Obviously, Conservatory is the key and whole and heart of this deck, Ravenous Flock, because we can do a lot of, a lot of pings with Balthys or any of our blocks, and also Katarina. Uh, the Centigrade can synergize as well with Balthys. It's a nice, cheap way to remove opponent's units. Two Glimpse for some draw in combination with two Whisper Words. Uh, we go Balthys, of course. Scorch Earth, of course, right? We're playing Nazis Control. It makes sense. And then we do play two Whales. We play two Vengeance. I don't think three Vengeance is correct. Because a lot of the big units this this meta, like Kaisa, have able to get spell shield really easily, which means that Bengis is not agreeing to spell shield. And then we play one heroine. One heroine is really good because of Gwen, right? If you level up Gwen and then you summon her with heroine, she just starts doing some crazy damage. Uh, but it can also be really well with some of the other units, like Katarina, for example, uh, or even Annie or the other units that we have, especially also Tybo, right? You can play Harrowing with Tybo and just pay a lot of value. Uh, so yeah, that, that's where one Harrowing comes into clutch. The deck is pretty straightforward. Again, more controlly archetype with Gwen. And I think I have found more success with this deck. I also have some, found some success with Gwen Demacia. But I figured that a lot of other country creators are really showcasing Demacia. So we'll wait to showcase that one later on the, later down the line. Uh, so anyways, hope you enjoy the games coming up soon. We had quite a few interesting games, including this very first game that you'll see. You'll see how crazy that game got. Uh, as always, if you like the content, please make sure to like the video and subscribe to us. We post error videos every single day. I'll see you all at the end of the video for some mulligan tips. In this matchup, we'll be going up against Aphelios. So it's going to be Aphelios, PNC, Wind and Light, right? We already know, we already know what this is going to be. Uh, I kind of like the Strike the Ban a lot, right? It could, it could give us a nice blockers. We need Balfis, though. House Spider is just as good as Balfis. I'll take that. I will take that. So we get the Annie, potentially get to level up Annie. Let's see if the opponent goes ahead and does the Mystic Shot. Do we, if, if opponent has Mystic Shot right here, do we care? Do we just summon the House Spider and call it a day? Do we even need to summon the House Spider now that we have Katarina though? If opponent commits the Mystic Shot here, I think I'm okay with that. So I think I always go House Spider. 
just push more damage right now. Let's say that the opponent has Mystic Shot. They Mystic Shot the Annie. They can Mystic Shot her during the attack anyways, right? So they can always kill her during the attack regardless. All that does is that we get one less skill, so obviously the Conservatory don't get, don't, doesn't get to advance. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. We also eat up the Mystic Shot, so now Katarina is free to come down and do something. He doesn't have enough spell to actually be able to summon Aphelios, so I'm not concerned about Aphelios. Hey, well, I guess he could summon the Aphelios now if he wanted to. Technically, he could summon Aphelios now if he wanted to. But then he doesn't have the Moon Weapon really value, right? I think we just save for Katarina, because Katarina can just, you know, do her thing anyways, right? I think Katarina is better than Gwen in this scenario. Because we're able to remove his unit. We're going to first attack with everything and see what the opponent does first. Because the opponent cannot block here as long as we have Blaze Edge, right? If they want to block here, are we ever committing that Blaze Edge there? I don't think we are, right? Can we just commit it here? I think we just kill the Victor, right? Every single time. Because we can just block the Victor here. He will be able to get the value from the Ballistic Bot, unfortunately. But we got a level of Katarina. We have a level of Katarina. We kill his champion. He still gets access to the Ballistic Bot, which is kind of annoying because this has to be something we need to be worried about later on in the game. But Gwen and Katarina together means that we can actually level up Gwen on our next turn. We flock now before the opponent high rolls his spell shield. So we always have to flock now before the opponent can high roll the spell shield. Mm, this is still kind of annoying though. Opponent could still have Aphelios as well. Need to be careful about that. No Tybalt. No Tybalt is kind of unfortunate. Do we just let this go? We just do this, right? It's a free turn to do this. If opponent attacks, we just summon Gwen. If opponent doesn't attack, I think we still summon Gwen next turn. It's just a 4 health. But he just gave it to us. So now we can potentially level up Gwen. So now we can potentially level up Gwen, because Gwen goes up to 5 right here. And then we summon Katarina, rally, and attack again with Gwen. Opponent's going to have to have the stun from Aphelios. Because Gwen here goes to 5, meaning that we're actually able to kill that Vi. While also pushing 7 damage. Yeah. Because you decided to attack next, last turn. You did, let us summon our Gwen. Which means that now Gwen is going to level up. Opponent is going to have to block. But it has to block. Whether it's now or blocks later. The only punish is going to be Aphelios. Uh, because we have the Vengeance. I'm not scared of the Winding Light anymore. Because we can always use Vengeance Divide. And this should be game. So this is game right here, because Gwen is going to level up. And this is the combo. Opponent is going to have to have... Actually, get excited doesn't even do anything. Yeah, this is just game. So we just go here. Snip, 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 snap. Hush. Okay, okay. That's a pretty good hush there. We still beg this though next turn, right? We still Benjamin's next turn. Okay, the Hush top deck is very good for them. But I decided not to take that much damage. Which makes sense. Okay, the Hush Benjamin's was actually... Uh, that Hush was really good. Why not do it right away, though? I guess he, I guess if he did it first, I would have just Benjamin's, right? So that's why he waited until we tapped out of mana for, like, a Benjamin's. So that he could actually do it. Uh, we should have also... I guess I guess the battle piece doesn't matter. So this is forcing the opponent... Like, if he attacks with buy, it's not even going to matter. Right? So the attack with buy doesn't matter. Opponent, does, opponent has enough to summon the wind in light because of the dust pedal. So you could still get the overwhelm here. Right? And we just bend this divide. Or we can just stun it. Oh, that's not a... Do we let this... Do we let this... Wait, why don't we just stun first? Why don't we stun first and then summon the Katarina? 
That way we can summon Katarina without worrying about the opponent killing her with Vi. We summon Katarina. Okay, opponent trying to decide to stun. He can still stun her, I'm okay with that. Because we can get rid of the oh, sunny urchin right here. Our spiderling is gonna have four attack as well. If opponent commits the moon weapon here, we respawn with the blaze edge. Okay, that's a good that's a good roll right there. That's a good roll from the opponent. Because he will stop us from attacking with a spiderling. The problem is that the spiderling goes up to only four though, right? That's the only problem here. Yeah, I guess the Spiderling only goes up to 4. I think we still attack with everything. Opponent's going to be able to heal all the way back up. But if they want to heal back up, they're going to have to sacrifice Aphelios, right? If they want to block, let's say, here. Wait, that's the worst block. You don't get the heal. <laughs> if they attack with Aphelios, so they they can they only get one heal. Because if they attack with Aphelios right here, they just lose their Aphelios anyways, right? Okay. Just give me the Aphelios like that. I'm completely okay with that. It's kind of awkward. No tie book is awkward. Skull Shape is really good though. Let's start here first. Now we don't have to commit the Vengeance. What if we just commit this right now? Force the opponent to block with the Boom Baboon. I force the opponent to block with the buy, sorry. Because we can always score sure that buy. But if it, it, it does lose us to the guy, it does lose to the guiding touch. So it's kinda a little bit unfortunate, right? I wanna force man, he gets the second affiliates, which is so annoying for us. <sighs> second affiliates is so annoying for us. Why does he get so many affiliates and we haven't drawn the we haven't drawn another Gwen or an Annie? I want to make the opponent's block as accurate as possible by killing this first. That way he doesn't get the free block with the Boom Baboon. We're still at 20 HP and we have Bengals and Scorched Earth. And we, whenever we start running out of resources, we can do Whisper Words. But I want to see if we can hit the Reputation because we can actually hit it because obviously these units are hitting for... Uh, one of them is going to be hitting for more than five. Uh, and I think we actually put the Katarina first, because the opponent's going to be forced to block the Katarina. Meaning that we get a free trade, right? While keeping this unit alive. He could just summon the Chumpers instead. I guess that could be an option. Hmm. I wonder what moon weapon he chose in this situation. What would I do in this situation? Calibrum just gives me another unit. So Calibrum isn't even that great either. So are we playing them on Guiding Touch? Do we have to play them on Guiding Touch? And not commit the Scourge and Divide? Oh, he's gonna just heal all the way back up. So he's just gonna choose to heal. The problem with that is that we don't actually need to do anything. We can just go like this. We don't need to attack with this unit. If he has Pell Cascade, we get punished. Oh, well, okay, we get Aphelios for free. Great, that's good for me. That means you don't get the overwhelming divide. So now we well, now we just commit the Vengeance, right? Now this is healed up, so there's no reason not to commit the Vengeance. Ooh, we get Annie, finally. Ah! That's annoying. That's really, really annoying. Do we just go for Whisper Words? Maybe we should have gotten the tie book by now, to be honest. I'm, gonna, I'm always going to Vengeance Divide. Third Aphelios, guys. That's the third Aphelios that the opponent gets. I'm going to pass. He has a Celestial car and has the Divide. And has another curated card. Okay, so we know his whole hand is curated stuff. So moon weapon. If I go like this, he can get the free kill with the Scorched Earth on the Annie. 
which makes me feel it's not correct to do it. So I think I just pass again. It's a lot of body that we're losing by passing, though. So he has the Moon Weapon, Sith's Cut Spell, and a Celestial card that's 4, 5, or 6. Therophilius. We killed one Victor already. Oh, actually, we killed two Victors. Wait, so opponent literally drew all their champions. Opponent literally drew all their champions. All right, so we just commit this, right, and call it a day. We just commit this and call it a day. We can... Aphelios is kind of annoying. Like, really annoying because of the Graviton. But it's not a big of a deal. We block this here. Get another Hallowed on the Graveyard. Cool. We can Katarina. If the opponent Gravitons, we just kill the Financier. But we can just do this first, right? I think we just do this first. We have to rally with Karina, right? No reason to do it. No reason to do it a second. If he goes like this, I think I'm okay with that. We have disintegrate, so we can actually kill the Aphelios, and that would be his last champion, right? So we can kill the Aphelios with disintegrate plus the Blaze Edge. When it still has Celestial Car and Sid's Cast Spell. He knows that we're about to attack again. Graviton, there we go. Do not want this Aphelios to uh, give him too much value. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. We go here, we go here. That kills Aphelios. And that's his last champion. So now opponent lost all the champions in the game. Oh wow, he gets more value here. You gotta be kidding me. Right? And Annie's about to level up soon. We can do the Ghastly Nar to have a bigger attack as well, because the Annie's always going to just get blocked. Or we can just do Whisper Words right now as well, to be honest. We can just Whisper Words right now. I don't hate the Whisper Words right now. Inside of Ages gets another two cards. Gets another two cards, so created, created, two more created, has the Celestial, has five created cards in his deck. Awesome. That's the tie bulk that we've been waiting for. We can do the Ghastly Nar, and then just summon tie bulk next turn. The opponent's going to have to block this, right? Because this is going to push a lot of damage. Stun. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, so that was another one of his creative spells. It still has the Celestial. We finally get the Tide Book, though, so now this is when things are going to get crazy. All right, so Celestial. Oh, the rest of his cards are creative stuff. Well, no, he has one card that we don't know about. Pick a card. What a high roller. Wait, this game is just going way too long for no reason. Flock? This is not great. This is actually really bad. We might actually lose now because of because of this this draw. Because we actually have very low resources, right? When is gonna just go for the winding light? I'm guessing. If the opponent is going like this, so at least I need to do the tie box so that we can put threat, so we can threaten with the even with the winding light. So they has they have one celestial car. That goes into another Celestial card. Oh my goodness. I am tilted. We open attack, right? So we always open attack. I'm so tilted. I'm so tilted. <laughs> we always open attack. Because this is going to be overwhelmed. I'm okay pressing okay right here. Because we died to a Mystic Shot. Opponent doesn't have the burn to finish us off. Because we know he already used. He has the Celestial card in his hand still. Cool. We can actually level up Na uh, Annie if the opponent tries to kill her. 
Oh wow, he got the sump warp from the inside of Aegis. But we get, we just get Katarina back, by the way, because of the Eternal Dancers. Wait, this is actually kind of pug. We just get Katarina back because of the Eternal Dancers, anyways. Because Katarina is the highest the highest power card that we have lost. So Katarina will be able to rally again. Uh, Katarina is a four, right? So she should be able to still get summoned even if we don't give the buff to Eternal Dancers. So we get to rally and then rally again because we're going to get Katarina back in our hand and Eternal Dancers is going to summon Katarina again. Wait, this is infinite rally. We didn't even try for it and I think it's going to be infinite rally. The opponent needs to kill this. But opponent needs to have gotten the Fallen Comet. Oh, no, no, it was the Traveler. Okay, so opponent one not, needed to have the Fallen Comet from this. Oh, wow. This is it, right? Oh, wait, no, it's going to summon the other guy. There's no way for it to summon Katarina, right? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, so this will summon the Katarina. Perfect, perfect. That's great. That's, okay, that's weird. So if we go this way, it summons the Conductor. But if we go the other way, it summons Katarina. With my power or less. Interesting. This is dealing three, so I'm okay with this. And then we get the rally again. This is gonna resummon another Katarina. And we have the infinite rally now, guys. Opponent's, opponent's gonna need even if the opponent gets excited this, opponent needs to kill this, right? He will be able to kill the Annie though, which is a little bit unfortunate. Oh, he's gonna go for the Tybo kill. Opponent dies if it blocks like this because of the blaze edge. We actually got the infinite rally when we were not even playing for the infinite rally. Because we attack again and this will summon another Katarina again. So we're gonna our whole hand is gonna be a bunch of Katarinas, which is actually not bad because the, the death lotus is actually pretty nice. What a game! What a game! What a game. <laughs> Opponent already sum summoned the Celestial. So all they have left... We Wait, they don't have any creative cards left. Oh, wait, they have one more creative card from Inside of Ages. So they play Sun Fumes, which they got from Inside of Ages. So they have one more creative card from Inside of Ages, and that's it. And they're going to play it right here. This is nuts. I'm actually I'm actually glad that he summoned Katarina instead of summoning Gwen as well. But Gwen is not leveled up, that's why, because Gwen only has three attack. So it's always gonna summon Katarina. I'm just very confused why it went the other way, right? Sure. I'll take this. We can rally again with Katarina, but we already have a rally, by the way. So technically, we're going to attack two more times here. Potentially more. Right? Let's go ahead and do this. Call it a day. Or do we just want to rally, rally, rally? Actually, let's keep the blaze set, right? Because this is going to summon another Katarina anyway. So yeah, infinite rally, guys. Literally infinite rally. Literally infinite rally. And now the Tybal cast Overwhelm as well. Well, not infinite, right? Because opponent can just kill the Eternal Dancers. But very close, like... Like, look, we just got another Rally again. And we still have four mana to play Katarina again. And we get the Blaze Edge, which are each doing two to all the enemies. So he needs to kill the Eternal Dancers, otherwise we attack one more time. Except that we can protect the Eternal Dancer with the Blaze Edge. What a, what a nonsense car. Okay, this car is busted. This car is busted. With Katarina. Wow. Wow. Like, he can't win there. He Mystic shuts the Tybalt. We just go here. So that kills the Charger. And now this gets to attack again. And summon another Katarina. Wow. By the way, 
We only play one Katarina in our whole deck, and we have two in our hand, and we still have four mana to play another one if the opponent somehow has a way to stop this. This feels bad. Like, really bad. <laughs> I love I love the opponent's enthusiasm. Yeah. Because we're just going to continue summoning Katarina, because this doesn't have a limit. This card is going to get nerfed so that it can only limit once. This card should only summon something once. That's actually... Oh, maybe not once. Maybe like two or three times, right? Wow. 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 <laughs> That's all I can say. GG's. So here we'll be going up against Kaisa Pantheon, which is actually... Might be a little bit awkward. Oh, we're going against Swasticles. Look at that. Uh, it could be a little bit awkward here. So the reason that I say it could be a little bit awkward is because we don't really have... Man, I like the Gwen and I like the Flock a lot, but it's also kind of risky. Hmm. We don't... Opponent has Spell Shield, is what I was trying to get at. So it might be a little bit awkward on when we can kill the Kai'Sa, where we can kill the Pantheon, etc. Um, our hand is not amazing. I, mean, I guess the Flock is really good, because opponent should never be able... Flock and Skull Shape are both really good. Okay, we get some draw. We don't have the conservatory, so usually you want the conservatory in this deck. It just makes so much of a difference, right? I'm fine taking this attack. If he wants to block here, be my guess. Does he commit the shape stone here? Okay, I was gonna say I was, I was wondering if, they, if he would have committed the shape stone. That actually would have been a pretty interesting punish. Uh, opponent shouldn't be able to summon anything here, right? I like the Conductor, that still gives us mana for Flock if we need to. And the opponent is actually not able to even block. So we still have access to Flock to be able to kill his blockers. Uh, I guess we do have to be a little bit careful about how much... Like, because this unit is pretty big, right? So a Shapestone is actually able to kill the Gwen. So maybe we don't commit the Gwen, maybe we just go like this and call it a day. You know what? We attack with both. We attack with both every time. Because if the opponent blocks, this is a free fight damage. There's no reason not to attack with both. If the opponent blocks with the Saga Seeker, we have Scorched Earth and Flock. And now we get to start working on the Conservatory. The only downside is how late the Conservatory is going to be. So that's a little bit of a concern. Because, I mean, we still like 10 here. We're still at 10, so they get two keywords. Again, we need to be able to watch out for the supercharge. That's really the that's really the biggest punishment in this in this matchup. I like the Gwen, it still gives me access to both Scorch Earth and Flock. If opponent wants to kill this Gwen as well, I mean we have a second one, so it's not a big deal. Ooh, lucky fine. Wait, I that's a nice way to trigger fade it. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about Lucky Find. That's actually a really nice way to trigger Fade it. It gets tough. So this is the hard part here, right? That until this thing dies, the Gwen is not really getting... Like, we don't have any Hallow buffs right now. Because we haven't drawn our 3 cost spell. So it's kind of it's a little bit awkward here. Hmm. We could do Tread the Needle. Maybe opponent tries to pull this. Does then he tread the needle? It's not bad. Hmm. So this is pretty good, right? This is pretty good for him because he, he he's not he doesn't actually like he doesn't actually take any damage because the opponent ended up getting the tough. Do we actually tread the needle here? Doesn't do anything. The Gwen still dies, right? I think we just let it go. We just summon the second Gwen and call it a day. That's pretty good, because if we do the Gwen attack to one, and then he was able to, you know, do this. Now, we just took that out of the way, which is fine. The super charge is, again, the super scary part here, like... How do we beat the supercharge? I think with vengeance. I 
think I'm okay doing the vengeance, to be honest. I think I'm okay doing the vengeance on this before he's able to do a supercharge on it. So I need to commit the vengeance. I, I, but the problem is that I don't want to open with the vengeance either because the opponent could easily have run a negation. So I want to see what he does first and then we do the vengeance. Like if he taps out of the rare negation, we can do the vengeance. Because we have no way to deal with the supercharge because we don't have any pain. Okay, so, so yeah, he got the supercharge. So, so because he got the supercharge, we have to go ahead and do this and hope that we draw the battle fees. Right? So we do get the battle fees. Which I'm okay pinging this right now. I'm okay pinging this right now. Could the opponent have a second supercharge? Yes. That is will be that will be a punish. But by doing the battle fist now, we play about Rider Negation. The fact that he's not damaged means that our units are not doing much. And again, Cyborg is still so far behind. He should have Supercharge again. Oh, oh. Interesting. Interesting. Did we just Vengeance this? If the opponent has the right of negation, they have it. If they have the right of negation, then I actually want to do the conductor first. You think we get punished by a second supercharge? We get punished by a second supercharge. Okay, I'm okay with this. This becomes vulnerable later on. Alright, if you have the right of negation, you go ahead and do it right now. I want to eat the Rider Negation right now. We're taking a ton of damage though. But I'm not going to block yet. So this is the Rider Negation. I'm not going to block with the little Spiderlings, right? By doing it this way, I force the opponent to have to like commit that, right? Do we actually do the Ghostly Ban? I guess we should. This is, this is getting really scary. This is getting really scary here, which is my problem. Let's do like this first. Because if the opponent has Pantheon, he's able to give, he's gonna have Barrier to completely block our Gwen attack. The Barrier is gonna be just too much of a punish. If he wants to block with the Wounded White Flame, he will, he will leave the White Flame vulnerable to block, which I'm okay with. The only problem here is that we're not, like, this is not really a good blocker into all of his overwhelming units, is it? This is technically presenting lethal. So opponent has to block, and they just block using the Boiling and call it a day. If he blocks with if he blocks the Gwen with the White Flame, like we we just lose to the Overwhelm. So here we just lose to the Overwhelm. I guess we can kill this. We don't care about Gwen dying because we have access to Harrowing. Gwen is one off from leveling up. She would have just leveled up right here on the spot, by the way. If I had one more Hallow in the graveyard. That's smart. That's a good way to do it. You block all the damage. Because you also got to kind of play around atrocity potentially. So you cannot go that low. He's, he, uh, uh, Rossicles is playing it really well here. Rossicles is playing it really well here. By keeping the white flame from not being damaged. Don't think we lose the Gwen here, by the way, because I think I want to keep the Gwen to block the Wounded White Flame. Damage the Wounded White Flame, and then be able to actually uh, kill it with Scorcher. Now, if the opponent gets supercharged, then yeah, it's a punish. So we kill his Overwhelm here. Maybe we actually needed to let that Gwen die, though. But the Flocks are just sitting in my hand doing nothing as well. This is where we get Tybalt on the field. So this way we get Tybalt on the field. Opponent is able to deal at least 8 here. 
Well, it's not bad, but well, it's not enough. One is gonna get overwhelmed and faded. So I think this is game now, right? This is gonna be game now. We're gonna have to summon the Tybulk. Has to be the Tybulk. So that we have a self a, a six health blocker. But we still get hit by the Wounded White Flame and the Kaisa. We are able to block. So we're able to block like this. Scorch Earth the White Flame. Opponent could have a Sober. Okay. So if the opponent has Rider Negation, we lose the game, I guess. If the opponent has Rider Negation, we lose the game. If it's not Rider Negation, we should be able to win. Because of the, uh, the harrowing. Is this a harrowing game? Uh, is this a harrowing turn? I think it is. I think it is. It's a harrowing turn because we can give the overwhelm Tybalt. So the, the, the Tybalt is going to have overwhelm. Which means that we're able to actually push that damage because the Tybalt is going to get buffed up by the Halo. And our Gwen's are each dealing three damage, right? And the Gwen is going to level up. The first one is, well, I guess, yeah, they all, they all, each of them are draining, are draining three damage. So we just go here. This gets buffed up. So this goes up to 14 with Overwhelm. And all of these other units get buffed up. And this is each dealing four. Goes double tie bulk. And there we go. Whew. Gwen levels up as well. Not that he matters. We already finished the game. That was close. That was very, very close. I thought we were actually going to lose that because of how well Rosticles play around the block and the Scorch Earth, right? But you can kind of see how the how crazy that combo is and why Harrowing is probably one of the best spells with Gwen. So GG's. Here we'll be going up against Annie with the fate. So we're going against Pimera as well. Really good player. Hmm. I like I need units. I want to keep the conservatory, right? We can either get Scorch Earth to stop his conservatory, or we can get units that will allow us to block. Uh, we always start with Annie, by the way, because Annie is the same thing as summoning the conservatory into a one. But at least this way, Annie gets to progress a little bit. There we go. I feel like he doesn't have conservatory, because if you have conservatory, I think you just play it in turn one, right? No reason not to. Problem here is that our hand is a little bit awkward. Now, Gwen is going to be really good. We top decker. Gwen is going to be really good, especially as we work towards leveling up this Tybo. We can just open attack next turn and keep advancing Annie and the Conservatory. Cool. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice vengeance. Honestly, that's going to allow us to deal with their Tybo. All right. So far, so good. So far, things are looking good. Obviously, his Annie is kind of annoying. Do we ever just kill his Annie now, right now? What if we do? What if we just kill his Annie right now? And threaten our Annie leveling up next turn because of one. I think the Annie is going to put a lot of value because Annie also gives him access to the stun. So I'm moving into... We have a blocker for the tentacle because of the sentry. So I'm not too concerned about it. We can summon Gwen and between, get, between the Gwen and the Annie skill, it will level up the Annie. Giving us access to Tivers. Okay. Annie still will level up. So Annie will still level up on the open attack. Which is all that we care about. Sure. So Annie gets to level up on the open attack here. Which means that we get access to Tivers. And call it a day. Unfortunately, Annie levels up after the fact, so she's not going to be able to actually uh, do 3 with her damage. But she still does 2, which means that the opponent still has to commit a flock here. We get the Tivers. We get the Tivers, and we get the Conser uh, we get the Tybok next turn. Which means that the Gwen is going to start becoming pretty crazy. 
Oh wow, he also gives us Twisted Fate. Which means that the opponent must have a second Twisted Fate. So opponent giving us Twisted Fate like this means that they have a second Twisted Fate. So this is really good here. Uh, we can Glimpse, I guess, for some value later on. If we need to, we can Tibbers. Or we can just tie ball. There's multiple ways that we can do this. Disintegrate. Okay, so the opponent has access to another twist of fate. It's what the opponent is telling us right here. Opponent has access to another sec another twist of fate. Is what they're telling us right here. So I'm gonna do this now. I'm forcing to commit something else to kill this. Otherwise, we just get the free draw. I like this. So now this stopped the opponent from actually doing Twist of Fate. They're going to deny us. So they're going to have to commit two cards to deny us this draw. And the Annie still doesn't level up because she still dies to the Tibbers regardless. Opponent goes with Twist of Fate right here. And we just Tibbers. I guess we could have used tie ball. Mm, okay, so we're still vulnerable to a twisted fate, huh? If we tie ball, then now our tie ball is going to be vulnerable to a flock. You know what? I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Do your twisted fate, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with twisted fate right here. Okay. That's not a twisted face. So now he have, not, so now he does the blaze edge then, right? We have two options here. Oh, he hits the make a rainbow. He doesn't hit the four one. He does hit the tie which is kind of annoying. So opponent, opponent threw the dice, ended up hitting it, right? Opponent rolled the dice and ended up hitting it. Uh, we always sacrifice both, in my opinion. I think we always sacrifice both right here. Because we just, we just lose to a Twisted Fate anyways. I'm going to actually Tivers this Annie. Does that make sense? Oh, wait. We can just Battle Feast. We can just Battle Feast her. Because the Battle Feast is doing two. If opponent wants to level up, we don't give him any good targets. So... By, by doing this foul piece first, it means that he doesn't have a target for like death hand and stuff like that. He will just be hit in the face. He knows we still have Tivers in our hand as well. Which makes it really awkward for him to summon anything. Do we play Tivers or do we play the Dancers? Opponent could easily have the stun here. Which is one consideration why Dancer doesn't make sense. I think, I think Dancer is always better later on. I think I'm just going to Tivers. I'm just gonna Tivers. This kills the Annie. That's another unit out of the way. Opponent has to have Twisted. That's three Annies down, by the way. So now we know the opponent's never getting Tivers. We already killed one Twisted Fate. Does the opponent have the next one? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So then he's gonna flock this here. So he always flocks this here. Oh, wait, that's not a flock. He drew three Twisted Fates. Oh, he does have the flock. He drew all three Twisted Fates. All three Twisted Fates. All three Annies. But no Conservatory, so it's okay. Uh, Riptide Rex is too much of a punish. If the opponent opens, we have to Vengeance. Riptide Rex is too much of a punish. Riptide Rex is too much of a punish here for us not to do this Vengeance. Just like that. Opponent just lost... Sentry, so opponent losing Sentry makes me feel like I can go ahead and do Eternal Dancers, to be honest. What about we do the Strike of the Band first? Let's go like this first. Each one of these is doing three. Opponent will have needed to draw. All right. Did you have the Sentry? Doesn't have it. So we can do this. This is going to summon another... Why is there not so many Tybalt? Oh, because we don't have enough... Uh, we don't have enough to actually summon Tybalt. So we want to do it like this then, huh? In which case, let's just do the Battle Piece right now. And just push more damage. Let's just do the Battle Piece right now and just push more damage. 
I, I was hoping we could summon the Tybalt, but since we're not summoning the Tybalt, it doesn't make sense, right? We just spread out our damage, and this is lethal. We hadn't done that many Hallow. We only have one Hallow Death. If we have more Hallow Death, we actually could have summoned the Tybalt. Regardless, opponent loses the Riptide Rats and loses the game. We got it. <laughs> that Vengeance last turn completely saved the game, right? When the opponent's going to open attack like that, you always do the Vengeance. So we, we survived Triple 2F and Triple Annie. GG's. So here we'll be up against Victor Kaiser. Mm -hmm. Vengeance is really good against this deck, I think. I also feel like I should keep the Battle Feast, but then I feel like we're a little bit too slow. We keep both Battle Feast and Vengeance. Obviously, the Supercharge is what punishes this Vengeance. So Supercharge will punish this Vengeance. Okay, we get Conservatory, so we're, we're in a good spot now, right? Because the opponent's going to have to deal with the Conservatory eventually. Uh, the Vengeance can kill potentially Victor or Kaisa before they get too big, which is really good for us. The problem is that we don't really have a lot of value in the rest of our hand. To really do anything crazy. We can strike up the barn. We can strike up the band right here. That still gives us six mana. Right? For our, for, our, for to kill the victor next turn. So it's not the end of the world. Tough is actually a really good keyword for him. Patch Pearl Bud. So it's the idea with Patch Pearl Bud that is just better than the run drop, right? I guess that makes sense. We always spend using this victor before he can get it out of, out of hand. And before the opponent has mana for battle negation. So Benyus in this victor always makes sense. We can Gwen and then have access to Eternal Dancers if the Gwen dies. The Gwen is going to actually let us... I still think it's Gwen. The Katarina is tempting. But I still think it's Gwen. Because Katarina is vulnerable to a Mystic Shot. Especially because Gwen just pushes so much damage here. Like, opponent has to block, right? Opponent has to block, otherwise they take... They will have taken 7 damage. And we start advancing the potential uh, Gwen level up, right? She also advanced our Conservatory by 1. I guess Kyrena would have done the same thing because of the Blaze Edge. He gets Faded. And also gets Overwhelmed. So he has Faded, Overwhelmed. Uh, should be very close. Alista gives quick attack, so it'd be a power to six. So he needs one more keyword. But again, he needs to kill this. He needs to kill this when, otherwise they just lose the game, right? Do they have challenger? So here he just went for a victor. I'm willing to do this. All right. Does he get the challenger though? We keep the Blaze Sedge to just target the Spell Shield, like the opponent rolls Spell Shield right here. Yeah, there you go. He hits the Spell Shield, we tag it. I mean, sometimes he just guess correctly, right? So he hits the Spell Shield, we tag it. <laughs> Gets to draw. I'm okay with this draw. This draw doesn't get him anywhere. Wait, is he just... No, it's not enough to level up one. This draw doesn't go in anywhere. Now, do we tie book first? Do we tie book first? Well, I guess we do now. Now that we have Annie, I think we just tie book. When it has to deal with tie book, because the tie book is gonna get the buff from the Hollow, so there's gonna be a big overwhelm unit. So put it so so the tie book is gonna get buffed up by two. So there's gonna be a nine six. When also gets buffed up, and this gets buffed, right? We lose the access to the rally here. But I don't know how important that rally is. This is pushing even more damage here, too. We still have access to Gwen Needle if we need to. Gets another spell shield. So the spell shield means that we're not actually able to heal this. You know what? Let's just go for it anyways. If the opponent wants to put damage on their victor, that's okay with me. If we get rid of the spell shield, that's better for us. Right? If we get rid of the spell shield, that's better for us. So if opponent can block this with Annie, 
Uh, he can block any with the victor, right? And if he does, I'm okay with that because if we move the spell shield, meaning that we're able to do thread the needle if the opponent goes for something crazy next turn. Obviously, he could still always have supercharge, which would be kind of annoying. But this is also presenting lethal because this is pushing. If he blocks with this, it's pushing six. And this is also dealing three, so that's going to be nine. So we can push at least nine damage. So we push at least nine damage. And one levels up on top of that. If he kills Katarina, we can potentially summon her back with Eternal Dancers and create an infinite combo. Opponent, ha opponent could have the word, word Abomination next turn, but the keywords that he has are not that great. He hasn't hit anything like Elusive yet. Quicksand? Quicksand is good. It kills the, it kills the Gwen. Quicksand is very good because he kills the Gwen. But he lets the Katarina level up. He lets the Katarina level up anyways. Do we glimpse this Gwen? I don't know if we glimpse her. I don't think we need to. By, by the way, the Katarina Blaze Edge is dealing two here. I think I want to just take it like this. I don't want to glimpse and potentially then have the opponent do like something like a Mystic Shot. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it like this. We All we need to do is just summon Katarina on the open. And opponent should have a very hard time dealing with her. Gwen still levels up, by the way, because she... Wait, why does she level up? She dies. Oh, wait. She leveled up because of the... Uh... No, wait. Why did she level up there? Huh. All we need to do... I guess we should have just... Yeah, if we glitch, we would have gotten the... <laughs> we actually would have gotten the level up on her. So I guess it's a good thing that we didn't glimpse. I do kind of think that maybe we actually supposed to look for... A flock or something like that. What if we just let this Annie go? Because if we get flock, we'll have the Katarina Blaze Edge plus flock. Okay, Scorch Sheriff is really good as well. So flock or Scorch Sheriff, either way we can kill this Victor. So we can play around the Victor shenanigans. We summon... Okay, we have double Scorch Sheriff as well. Opponent could have negation though, which is could be scary. Are we scared of this? Of the second skin? I don't think I am. Because once the opponent attacks, we just summon the Gwen and we win the game. So even if the opponent kills Katarina right here, it doesn't matter to us. So opponent can go here. Second skin. This gets spell shield as well. He has elusive, so that's going to be 11. The Kaisa goes an additional... Three, so at most is gonna be fourteen. Okay, well he lost the game now. Nice try though. Nice try. So we're able to kill, kill, kill. We go We go here and we just go Scorch Earth into Blaze Edge. And that's lethal because then we just attack and call it a day. So we attack with the we attack with the Tybo. The moment that he tapped out of Rider Negation, it gave us all that we needed to do this. But I guess if he doesn't go for the Rider, if he, if he doesn't go for this play, he still loses, right? But that's why that glimpse was important. We ended up I mean, we were, we had topped like the first go sharp anyways, but and now we open Tybo goes up to nine again. Katarina is gonna be good. Opponent doesn't have life steal that I have to worry about, and that's game. The Tybalt Cobalt one plus the Katarina attack is enough. I mean, you need to block the Tybalt, my friend. Yeah, and there we go. Why didn't the... I guess the opponent couldn't commit the Victor spell because he, he, he would have passed initiative back to us. I was wondering why they didn't do the Victor spell. Well, that makes sense now. So, GG's. Hey, welcome back, everybody. What do you think? I wasn't kidding when I said we had some very interesting game. Hey, can you believe how crazy that game against uh, Aphelios was <laughs> literally a 20 minute game. 
and we hit the infinite combo that I talked about without even really trying. Uh, now, you kind of get to see how much value Tybo puts in, right? Because it makes everything just do so much so much more damage. Um, in terms of Mulligan, Tybo has to be what you're looking for, right? I keep Annie, I'll keep Tybo, or Hard Mulligan for one of these two. Uh, sometimes, if I'm going against an aggressive deck, I will keep the House Fighters as early blockers. Uh, otherwise, you really just want to get those two things early on. Uh, and the rest is going to be matchup dependent, right? You saw me keeping Vengeance sometimes. If I know I need to target something right away, like on that Victor match, uh, sometimes you might keep stuff like, I don't know, Well against Super and against Agar. You can keep Gwen if you already have stuff like Tybok in the field. Um, and then you can stop, stop, keep stuff like Flock against Demacia because he ends up being really, really good. But yeah, for the most part, you start with Annie and Conservatory and just kind of go from there. Start drawing to the rest of your cards later down the line. Uh, so yeah, that, that's it for my mulligan advice. Hope you enjoyed this deck. I think this is, again, one of the best Gwen decks out there right now. Playing a little bit more controlling. Well, it's not just purely winning through Gwen, but she could be a big part and a big threat that the opponent has to watch out for and not allow her to level up and just do so much damage that way. Uh, as always, if you like our content, please make sure to subscribe below and like this video. We post a lot of videos every single day, so all the support that you can give us really helps a lot. You can also find us on Twitch at Twitch Terminal. We're streaming three to four times a week. And you can also find us on Discord and Twitter. The links to those are both in the description below. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again tomorrow.